Hello there, it's John Buck here with another Middle Earth Shadow of War video. Today we're discussing 4 versus 4 Arena. We were expecting Co-op Arena, instead we've got 2 days of Player versus Player Arena. I understand and recognise that the reaction from the community so far has been a bit mixed in regards to PvP. Uh, it's seen as imbalanced, there's a lot of uh, reliance on the attack buff for example. Uh, it's difficult as a thing to learn. So I wanted to touch on a few basic points and basic strategies on how to get into PvP. The main things to look at. Uh, maybe a bit of a mindset as well as some strategies you can use to improve your ranking in PvP. I'd like to kick off by discussing team composition. It's very important in 4 vs 4 Arena to choose 4 champions that work really well together. The players know how to use them, know how to maximize them. They need to be able to survive but also to be able to deal damage to the enemy. We're going to start off with Champion 1, Keller Brimbor, Single Target Damage King. I believe he's very important for the PvP and for the 4 vs 4 Arena. Uh, we know that Killer Brimbor can do a lot of single target damage, can take at enemies really quickly. We want them to have to revive. It's going to take time for them to revive. And so while they're like the enemy's down a champion, down a player, it means that it's now four versus three for a few seconds while we're trying to eliminate or pick away at the other characters too. So Killer Brimbor is really good at knocking down squishies. So Saruman, uh, opposing Killer Brimbors, I mean, any Idrils, uh, Gorbans, any, anything squishy on the other side, Killer Brimbor should be targeting. And if you can get the attack buff on Killer Brimbor, plus the ability, like it's, it's one hit kill city. So it, Killer Brimbor is really important to knock down enemy threats. Now, to go with Killer Brimbor, champion number two is actually Talion. There's obviously a lot of synergy between Talion and Killer Brimbor. Uh, they do help each other out a lot. Uh, Talion, though, is really good for getting the attack buff as well. Being a fighter, it's quite sturdy, can also do a bit of damage output, and then Shadow Strike can bounce between uh, enemy heroes. So you'll find that when you get through PvP, they, there are some times where a few of the enemies are down at low health, and then Talion with attack buff can just go zap, 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 and knock out maybe one, two, three heroes and get them down. And if you can knock out all four heroes before they revive once, well, then you win the game as well. Talion is really good from that perspective, can survive, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of characters has a good damage output, and is really good for the attack buff. A slightly controversial third pick is Halas. Now, I believe Halas is absolutely necessary to PvP. If you're looking for a healer in your team, Halas is amazing, and compared to Marwin, Marwin's great in you know, PvE and against the campaign and against the co-op arena, but Halas is amazing in PvP. Halas as a healer doesn't need to be targeted, so for starters, everyone's running around all over the place, and Marwin just can't stick a heal if you're moving so often. So Halas is really good from that perspective. Secondly, Halas has suppression. Halas can slow down the enemy. So if you get suppression on someone that's running away from you, then you can start cornering that champion. You can start catching up with that champion and get some damage in. Not only is there a suppression or a slowing of the movement speed, but also attack speed gets slowed. So if you can get Halas to put suppression on a Saruman or a Killer Brimbor on the other side, then you can lower their damage output. Obviously that's a huge benefit because uh, a big part of PvP is trying to do as much damage as quick as possible to one target, get rid of them, get them off the park, and then get to the next guy. So you can get Halos to slow down that chain, slow down that process. It gives you more time to build your threat and then build your attack as well. Now these three characters so far, they have a bit of synergy. There's a bit of man synergy, a bit of ranger synergy as well. So Halos and Talion have the rangers, and then you've got uh, the man as well. The fourth character can take advantage of that as well. So for example, a Baronor as a fourth character is really strong. One, for that synergy, but two as well for taunts. Being able to peel an enemy off one of your, say, weak characters or someone that's getting damaged a lot, being able to attract the attention of that enemy character, that's really strong. Even being able to taunt and just run. <laughs> you, if you taunt and run, then the enemy needs to follow you. The enemy can't use your ability and they must follow Baron all. So if you can run the, up and down the map and you've got your damage dealers off the side shooting along the way, that's a pretty strong strategy as well. It's a bit harder to pull off, but it's something that's worth thinking about. Now, outside of Baranoi, you can also consider Saruman as a fourth. Uh, Saruman does have AoE for ability, which means, again, like Marwan, it's hard to get a cluster. It's hard to get a lot of enemies in the AoE. But if you can find a, a point where Saruman can drop the AoE with the attack buff, he can kill, he can knock out uh, an enemy champion really quickly. Saruman's really weak. Saruman's like insanely squishy, so he'll be a target. He'll be the first one targeted, so you need to have your team protect Saruman. But if you can carry him to a point where he can get the damage off, then 
is, is a good fourth option. If you've got Killer Brimbor and Saruman dealing damage, plus Talion as well, as a fighter to kind of act as a wall between them, then Halas healing as well. That's a really strong combo. Uh, so I would I would be leaning towards Baranor and Saruman as your fourth player. A Legolas or an Arwen, really anyone ranged as well, probably does a really good job. They have high damage, but of course they're a bit harder to grind a bit harder to farm, so you don't see as many Arlens and Legolas's in the game, but I believe they'd be a pretty strong fourth option as well. Now going hand in hand with team composition is the kill order, so what you need to do to knock out the other team. Presuming that the other team is an optimized team and they've got the best four characters they can have, how do you eliminate their threats as quickly as possible and protect your own threats? It does seem like in 4 versus 4 arena, the most important enemies to go after are the squishies, the range characters. If you see a Saruman, get rid of Saruman. If you see a Brimble, get rid of Killer Brimble. Um, Arwen Legolas as well. If you see an Idril or a Gorbin, I would argue that they are also high priority targets. Not because they're dangerous for everyone, but I feel like if, you, if you're seeing that kind of an enemy, you may have found a player on the other team that knows what they're doing and knows how to use that character to their best potential. And Idril, for example, is super squishy, but really high damage and has a stun as well. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of threat there if the other player knows how to use that character. To kill order, I believe, get rid of the squishies, get rid of range, because they're the biggest threats. And then you're going to go probably through the healer next, because healer is going to keep the enemy up. You want to get rid of them. Um, and then fighter and then tank. A big focus in 4 versus 4 arena, and I believe uh, fair fair topic for criticism is the reliance on buffs. If you can if you can secure the attack buff on one of your attack champions, then you're going to have a really good time in arena. You're going to be able to knock out a couple of enemies and you're going to be able to get that advantage and get that tempo. Even if Baronaut or Halas had to pick up the attack buff to stop the enemy from doing it, you need to get that attack buff. You need to secure the buffs in the game. The main buffs that you'll see, you've got an attack buff, which is the sword. There is a heal, but it's only a one, like a one champion heal, so it's one heart. Um, there is a defense buff as well. Who needs that, but still go for it. And then finally, there's an ability buff too. So if you can get an ability buff on Killer Brimbor or Saruman, and they fire off, knock someone out, get that ability buff, and then do it again, that's huge as well. That's huge for your tempo in the game. So make sure as a team, as a unit, you are controlling the buffs. And if you see one pop up and you're the closest person to it, even if it doesn't synergize with your champion, get that buff so the enemy doesn't get it. As an aside, if there's two people on the same team running towards the buff, and one of them should have the buff, let them take it. But if you're the closest person and the only person's going to get it, secure the buff to stop the other team from getting it. And my final point, which I think might be the scariest part of 4 versus 4 for a lot of players, is micro and how to move your character around the map. There's a lot of variables in 4 versus 4 It's hectic, a lot of stuff happens. There's some really important basics though. For example, focus fire is important. So if you see someone low uh, on health, join in. If there's two damage guys on your team, maybe both of you should target one enemy and get them down to you know knocked out or, or dead status. Moving is really important. I'm finding that Saruman, for example, has voice of Saruman, which seems to be the first thing that pops out of his staff in, in the arena. So move sideways so it, it flies by. There are a couple of what I call skill shots, which is it needs to be targeted, it needs to hit the enemy. You can dodge those skill shots. So if you're going left and right and that shot misses, well then that's a waste of that champion's resources and now you've got that slight advantage and you can try and go into the counter attack. This point's gonna sound really counterintuitive. One is to stay together and two is to spread out, <laughs> if that makes sense. So if you start to stay together, help each other out. So if you as a fighter, for example, or someone that's not a tank, not designed to take damage, but if you're seeing a Saruman or a Killer Brimbor is taking damage, especially melee, try and move in between the melee enemy and your guy that you're trying to protect. Even if you're just body blocking for a little bit, it's gonna help keep your damage dealers alive. From a spread out perspective, if you're playing against a Saruman or an Arwen, don't stand next to each other because as soon as their ability goes off, you're all getting hit. So if you if you can see a Saruman, try and spread out far enough that that AOE can only hit one of you, but you've still all got access to attacking the Saruman as well. Uh, especially if you're playing Killer Brimbor and Saruman and Halas, you're all ranged. So you can give yourself a bit of space, but still get eyes on the enemy as well. We're just going to quickly go through a 4 versus 4 arena as well. You can see I've got the Killer Brimbor, Tally, and Halas combo plus Saruman as well. So it's a really good combo for the 4 versus 4. Uh, and the first thing you'll see me do as Halas is dodge sideways and Saruman skill shot sail straight by. Pretty happy with that for the start of the game. Now, after this, I get suppression on Saruman as well to nullify the threat of Saruman himself. 
and we're just going to target him down and get ready for him. Now, once Saruman's down, I actually run across the map and get away from him, knowing he's going to revive at some point. I don't want to be nearby. We find Keller Brimbor, also a high threat. Gets suppression on Keller Brimbor. He's down next. I did get caught in the enemy Saruman AoE as I repositioned to the middle of the map. Bit ordinary, but we all make mistakes. Uh, now, we've got a, the ability at the top of the screen here, the ability buff. And one thing that I want to point out, which we touched on earlier, was that just having that awareness of the map and moving up. Now, I know my killer brew board did get that ability, um, but the enemy Italian was going there as well. So if I may be moving up, um, I was there to support the killer brew board from the Italian. We got him down. We got down the enemy Altario. We got the win high files all around. One thing I'd like to see change is just these milestones popping up every thousand trophies and it all happens at once. Like there's gotta be a quick way to do that. I recognize that four versus four arena has had some mixed reactions from the community. I hope that this really basic guide with some basic principles on PVP helps you out there. If you're looking to get into the PVP, if you wanna get into some of the rewards that come from the PVP, then take a couple of these points on, build on them, make sure you share it with the community as a whole as well. We can all get better at PVP together if we just share what works. So thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.